So we're gonna start out by giving an overview of the Java Reactive Streams API. And in this part of the lesson, I'll describe the key interfaces that are part of the Reactive Streams API. And we'll also talk about some of the patterns that these interfaces implement, which you should be aware of in order to understand how this interface works, these interfaces work. So Java 9, and of course, everything since then, supported reactive programming via something called the Flow API. The Flow API is a class that contains a bunch of interrelated interfaces and some static methods for establishing flow controlled components where publishers can produce items and send them to subscribers, which will consume them. And there's a, there's a particular entity called a subscription that mediates the interaction between those in a flow controlled environment. You can see here that there are four primary interfaces defined as part of the flow class. They're all nested interfaces. And the purpose of doing this is to ensure interoperability between reactive streams implementations. And what this means in practice is that we can take things like Project Reactor or RxJava and so on, and they can actually work together even though they have lots of things different. They have these common interfaces that they can interface and interact with. So the first interface we're gonna look at is called Subscriber. And this defines four methods that a data receiver or data cons consumer must implement to get data from a publisher. And as you can see here, these methods include ways of being able to be called back to handle a subscription. We'll talk more about that in a moment, as well as be able to have hook methods that are called on data arrival, the on next method, data completion, the on complete method, and error events, which is the on error hook method. So that's what a subscriber is. That's kind of the root of things that receive events from one or more publishers. A publisher is an interface that represents a data source that subscribers can subscribe to. And as you can see here, when a, when a subscriber subscribes to the publisher, it, it gives a reference to itself. And then the publisher will be able to start sending it data by calling the on next hook method. Now there's something else that a publisher will also do, which we'll talk about in more detail a bit later, where it'll actually call the on subscribe method the publisher will call the onsubscribe method, giving it a chance to register its interest in how much data it can consume. Then there's also something called a processor, which is both a subscriber and a publisher. As you can see here, it is going to basically extend both publisher and subscriber. And so it can basically serve as an intermediate node in a pipeline, receiving data from events from a publisher, and then passing them along to subsequent subscribers. And then the fourth and final piece of the puzzle here is a subscription, which is basically the link between a publisher and a subscriber. And it allows the subscriber to control the flow of data from the publisher by requesting more data, by canceling a subscription and so on. And we'll talk shortly about how subscriptions can be used. They don't have to be used at all, but when you use them, they're a way to be able to exert back pressure between back pressure aware publishers and subscribers. Now the flow API supports various patterns that work in a stream environment, publish subscribe patterns. And you can see here where we have a publisher, which is going to be informed by a subscriber about how many items the subscriber is willing to accept. And then the publisher will go ahead and send that acceptable number of items to the subscriber or subscribers. There are two primary patterns that are implemented here, both of which are seen in the Gang of Four book that you're hopefully familiar with. One is the iterator pattern where the subscriber informs the publisher how much data it can consume in, in a tranche or a chunk. And so this basically uses a pull model where the subscribers tell the publishers how many items they can pull at a given time. And then there's the observer pattern, which is another gang of four pattern, which applies a push model that reacts when a publisher source pushes an item to one or more subscriber sinks. So iterator and observer, basically the way the reactive streams flow API interacts along a pipeline. And of course, this yields the publisher subscriber pattern, which is described in the POSA one book. 
and there's lots of knowledge about PubSub out there. And this basically enables publishers to announce events to interested subscribers in an asynchronous manner without tightly coupling the publishers with the subscribers. So that's the overview of the first part of reactive streams.